Hello, everyone. Welcome to The View for the match day review of Sheffield Wednesday versus Leeds United. 2 0 win for Leeds last night. Hope everyone's having a cracking day. I am fully aware that I've gone live at the same time that um, Ipswich are playing Cardiff, but we'll keep an eye on that as well. Um, but thanks to everyone who's watching. Wanted to uh, do our usual short kind of digest of what we saw last night. An interesting game last night. A couple of people floating around in chat as well. Good morning, Paul. Buzzing like a bee. Good to hear, mate. Hope you're well. Midgey Mod, afternoon all. How nice is it? Enjoy a whole weekend. Yeah, whole eight days now of Legion United Joy. Hopefully, the results go our way. This morning, everyone's quite happy. Stripper in the house. Good afternoon to you. Paul is there. Jason. Um, morning, Jason Taylor. Um, good morning to John Buck. And also, Jason O'Keefe. Hope you're doing well, mate. Hope everyone is well. Kenneth's floating around here as well in the, in the house this morning from Wisconsin. Nice to have you here, Kenneth. Thanks very much for, for popping in. Uh, West Yorkshire Retro Gamo, El Do, El Do indeed. And Letchy Badger, Letchy Badger, I hope that's right. Morning, hope you're well. Hope everyone's doing well. Yeah, we'll get into it today. It won't take too long. As usual, we'll try and get through this as quick as we can. Uh, we'll keep an eye on the Ipswich score. It's currently half an hour gone in Ipswich versus Cardiff and still nil-nil in that game. Um, but let's talk about our own game. Let's talk about last night. So we'll do the usual stuff. We'll have a look at the top line. Kind of thoughts on the game. We'll look at then some of the details in the first and second half. We'll also have a look at the stats, see how we we, we fared up in the game and is it matched what we thought it should have matched. Um, and also I want to talk about a couple of the players and performances as well before we uh, we wrap up today as well. So we'll do that. We'll go through the team as well. Uh, West Yorkshire Retro Game of predicted a draw. So did I. I was. I'm not going to lie. I was quite advice. Uh, quite nervous about this uh, last night. And John Buck has taken Farka's advice. Coffee cake and sofa. Yeah. Yeah. People keep an eye on that game as well. Martin, good morning to you. Hope everyone's well. We'll get into this. We'll start off with the top line. And um, last night, I think we saw two very different halves of football and two very different performances from Legion United first half and then second half. For me, first half, I think, looked very similar to what we'd seen against Huddersfield, very similar to what we'd seen against Stoke in part. I, I think the words I wrote down in my notes was a very meh, First half, lots of the ball, but not a whole lot of penetration, a lot of possession, but an awful lot of tempo. I think in the first half for me, we um we did struggle with the speed of the game. We didn't get into any kind of red tempo or rhythm in the first half. And that's been a problem for a couple of weeks, but I think we did see that change towards the back end of the second half. There were some big incidents in the first half, though, that I think set up the second half to be what it was for Legion United. If you look at the first big moment in the game, it's when Sheffield Wednesday have a break from a corner kick. The ball breaks from it after a corner was taken. Um, and there's a pretty, I think it was a doggy, has a pretty good chance of putting Sheffield Wednesday 1-0. But Melee spreads the body nice and well, gets a little flick on it, puts the ball wide for another corner. Leeds get off the hook. So massive moment in that game. Leeds go 1-0 down. It could be a very different half for Leeds as well. Um, Nick says personally I couldn't see Sheffield Wednesday score at any point well outside the point where they nearly scored Nick <laughs> outside of that point I completely agree with you but there was that moment in the first half where you're like oh. yeah uh, how hard is, is Joe Rodon he's very hard fast becoming one of my favourite players in Legion United Short thought he was excellent yesterday again but yeah uh, big big shout out for Melier for that big save as well did have a, a second moment in the first half where the ball was shot and he kind of panned it took a wicked bounce the pitch wasn't great took an, a very awkward bounce he just gets his top hand to it and then Ethan Ampadu does what the defence is supposed to do gets back in around covers his goalkeeper clears the ball which is all that you want to see the second big moment in the half is probably Pat Bamford's goal just before half time and we should talk about Junior Firpo as well He's very, I do like Junior in a weird way, weird sets. I do like Junior, but he does give you the yips, doesn't he? At times, like defensively, I thought Firpo had probably one of his weakest games this season for Leeds United, but then going forward, he adds a huge amount in attack for Leeds and is very, very involved, creates an awful lot of space for Creed to come inside when he does the overlapping runs. He was very, very good going forward. So it's a strange one, um, for me with Junior Firpo. I think we've got a really good winger in Junior Firpo at some point. I'm not so sure about the defensive stuff, but he gets away with it at this level and it's fine. But he does add, he really, really does add an awful lot for Leeds going forward. And, and that's that's an important part to take away from the game as well. The Melier save, as I said. Um, but that goal right before half time from Pat Bamford, for me, changes the entire complexion of the game. It is a beautiful cross from Junior Firpo. And it's not a hit and hope cross either. There's a moment just before he crosses the ball in where he has a little look around the corner to see where Paddy is. And it's a beautiful 
beautiful bent across all the way around the defenders for Paddy Bamford to do what an experienced striker does. And time is run, be patient, step in in front of the, the goalkeeper and get that touch on the ball. It's a great goal. It's a really, really well-worked goal. Uh, and nice to see it. And I, for me, that changes the entire outlook of the game. It changes how Leeds move into the second half. All of a sudden, the five-man defence that Sheffield Wednesday had been, had been used and pretty much keeping Leeds quiet in front of goal has to start doing more, has to spread out, has to come forward more. And that, for me, completely changed. They they weren't going to sit back. They had to win that game or get something from that game again as well. So that was huge. The first half for me, though, to, to take it apart, I thought the tempo was slow. As I said, it was a bit meh for me. Georgie has a huge chance inside three minutes where it's a lovely chest from Patrick Bamford down to him. He slices the ball wide from, from four yards out. Not saying he should score from that angle, but he should definitely work the goalkeeper from that position. He doesn't. Georgie and Willie's passing for me into the final third in the first half was sloppy and wasn't always hit with the right amount of pace. It was over hit more often than not. We had some really good opportunities to play people in if we waited the passes properly in the first half and maybe take a bit of pressure off us in the first half. We didn't do that. Sheffield Wednesday have two big chances. They have the, the, the Melier save as well. And then there's that mistake from Junior Ferpo where they get the run through. Um, and luckily, luckily nothing comes of that. Leeds did grow into the first half for me, though. The last 10 minutes, that leads with the better of the, the sides. Jorginho Rutter has that chance where he could have lobbed the goalkeeper. just doesn't get enough on the ball for me. Um, I think if, it, if he's a bit cuter there, he hits the ball down into the ground as the keeper's jump when he tries to sell the keeper. doesn't do it. Um, and then the rebound is, is blocked off the line. And then there's the goal. So, But for me, the last five, ten minutes of the first half, Leeds were starting to really, really grow. The injury time helped. Dan Danny Roll is not happy with when the first goal comes. I think it comes in the 49th minute. There was four minutes added on from 45, which is 49. Referee's not allowed to blow the whistle when there's an attack going on the opposition penalty area, which is where Leeds were at the time. So, I can get it. I think if we were on the receiving end, we'd be complaining about it as well, but we're not. So, we're not. So, you know, there's that. Uh, second half for me, then, I think we see a very different performance from Leeds United. As I said, the Bamford goal, all of a sudden the game has to open up. And the second half was a very open game. But there were some lovely moments in the second half for Leeds as well. Um, there's that moment where he makes that save. I know it's, it looks like a sloppy save, but it's a good save considering the bounce it takes. And then uh, Ethan Abadou clears it away. The goal itself, uh, Willie Nanto's second goal for me is great. It's a really, really good goal. What I noticed about Leeds in this game more than other games is Leeds went an awful lot longer at times when they had to. They used the, the likes of Bamford's height. They used the runners off the ball. Uh, and George again. George is not very accurate with his head, but he can win headers. And I think it's but win the second balls after that. But um, the goal, in the 50, I think it's a 57 minute. Yeah, 57 minute. The goal comes and it's a very good goal. It's a long ball from Ilan Melier. Paddy Bamford does a fantastic job. He's been dragged backwards by the centre back. He's both arms around him. He's a full grab of his jersey, pulling them backwards. Bamford gets the hands around them, leans in, leans in, leans in. That little flicker on the corner to Georgie. And then Georgie doing something that he hasn't done an awful lot of, and that's released the ball quickly. Bounces one touch into Willy Nyonto, and it's a super finish by Willy Nyonto. But we should also talk about the defensive performance, because for me, Joe on Joe show last night, Joe wasn't blown away by Ilya Grew's passing yesterday. A bit frustrating. I think passing in general yesterday was frustrating for a lot of people. But what I will say is from a defensive perspective, Ilya Grew, for me, had a very, very good game, breaking up attacks, tackling people, winning the ball back, delaying people, turning players around and facing them back towards their own goal, which I think is a huge, a huge part of what he what he brings to Leeds. But Ethan Ampadu and Joe Rodon in the back two were phenomenal for me last night. They were absolutely brilliant. They're getting better. There is a stat that I want to show and credit the man that put the stat up, LUFC Data on Twitter. So if you're not following LUFC Data on Twitter, you should be following them, him and stats because they both have some brilliant stuff. Have a little look at this, this partnership. I'll zoom in so you can see it better. Here we go. So LFC data. Joe Rowan, Ethan Ampadu as centre-backs for Leeds. Minutes played, 1,080. 12 matches, 11 wins. Conceded three goals. Goals conceded from open play, zero in 12 matches is impressive. Nine clean sheets as well, which is brilliant. Ampadu and Rowan have now played 18 hours of football without conceding a single goal from open play, which is absolutely nuts. And a massive, again, if you're not checking this man out, by the way, go check this man out. There's some brilliant stuff here. Absolutely brilliant stuff in the game yesterday. So check it out. Andrew Dalton as well, you know, contributor to the show. And yeah, we'll also have some stuff up as well. You can check them out as well. But massive, massive performance from those two men at the back. Huge for Leeds and a huge part of what Leeds are building since the turn of the year. Yes, there was that little hiccup against Huddersfield, but taking a point actually might turn out to be a decent point down the road. But to get the two other wins against Stoke in the, in the performance that we had, to still go and get three points. And again, last night, not only to get three points, but to improve the performance from, from what was a slow first half to a very more Leedsy looking second half, fast moving ball, all very, very good. So great to see that as well. 
I thought they were massive. They're absolutely massive. The defensive capabilities we have in this team right now are absolutely huge. I and mean, you could have tossed a coin between Ampadu and Rodon for man the match. I think if they said themselves afterwards in the uh, press conference or the interview with Sky that Ampadu said he would have given it to, to Joe Rodon, but you know, they don't come around too often, so he's gonna hang on to it. So um yeah. I thought they were brilliant. I thought Ilya Groove in front of them was brilliant as well. We are getting a bit sloppy at times with the pass, but I, I really do think the, um, I think I said this to Tanya on the, the channel during the week and one of the, the comments, um, I think the changing of the weather and the changing of the pitches will start to play back into Leeds' hands and now the pitches are going to improve. You're going to look more grass in them because last night, Sheffield Wednesday's pitch was mud. It was just mud. Flattened mud, but still very much mud. I think the pitch is getting better. We'll start playing. How, we'll start to play into how Leeds like to play football as we come out of this kind of this this uh, winter patch now into the and the running. And we've pretty much got a week between every game now outside the Easter break, the Easter weekend. Sorry to um to get plenty of rest between it. The next eight days are going to be huge for Leeds before they go up against a Neil Harris Millwall side, who which is going to be a tough game. I wasn't worried about Millwall earlier in the season. A Neil Harris Millwall is a very different type of Millwall, a very physical side. We know what to expect. There'll be a lot of long balls, minimize free kicks in that game. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. But um, yeah, we're gonna be edgy. We're all gonna be edgy. I did was a bit edgy about last night going into the game. I didn't think we'd two all draw. I did say that. As always, I'm very happy to be wrong. I'm very happy to be wrong as long as Leeds win. Um, but I think there will we will be edgy. Nine games to go now. We're into the final stretch now. So a little bit of a break for Millwall, then another little break for the mini, the mini um international break, and then there's the running. And we're flat out then till the end of the season. And fingers crossed, Leeds end up in the right place. Still nil all between Ipswich and Cardiff. 41 minutes gone that game. Still nil nil. Hopefully it stays that way, or hopefully um Cardiff can do us a favour. It'd be a tough one though. I think Ipswich probably a bit more than a bit more than Cardiff have. We'll have to wait and see though. Hopefully it goes our way. And Leicester away a hull at three o'clock as well, which would be a big game as well. Uh, a couple of other performance I want to talk about. I want to talk about Pat Bamford. He's got a lot of stick this week, and I think unnecessarily um a lot of people wanted Matteo Joseph to start in the game, and I have no issue with that. If you wanted Matteo Joseph to start, no problem. There's a lot of people saying that Matteo Joseph must start the game, and that's the that's the term I took the issue with. He must start because it's a definitive statement. And for me, Leeds are in a position where they're going really, really well at the moment. There's a good understanding of the front four there. Bamford does a really good job of occupying defenders, being a nuisance, being a pain. And um, the shit I was reading last night as well was there as well. So you know, giving it this to the, the Wednesday fans. Also, actually, just a quick shout out when Leeds did score. Be nice to see if the EFL do anything about the water bottles being thrown at Ilan Millian in the pitch because if it was Leeds fans doing it, they'd be all over us. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if they actually do anything with just two balls, bottles of water launched at Ilan Millian after Leeds scored. But Millian did give it that to the middle of fans as well. So, I'm all right with that. I'm all right with that. Great, good to see. Good to see. Uh, yeah, but Paddy for me had a really good game last night. Did what he needed to do, holds the ball up well, brings other players into the game, distracts the centre backs. And he was dealing with three centre backs last night and still managed to be involved in both goals at Leeds, you know, and big part in both goals. The, the obviously the goal for the first one, but that hold up play for that little flick around the corner, it's controlled as well as everything else. So great to see. Matteo Joseph will get his time, will have his moments. And I'm I'm very excited to see what Matteo Joseph will bring to Leeds when he does get that chance. But it's very much in his first season. I think Lockie said it on Joe's channel yesterday. Chris Somerville had his, you know, his introduction se- introductory season last year. We came off the bench and played a couple of games. Matteo Joseph was having that this season. So if he has a good preseason, who knows where he'll be next year. And, and that's what Lockie said. And I agree with Lockie 100 percent on that. So yeah, it's um for me, the experience right now is working. Let's not change things unless we have to. Daniel Farke will know when to but change them. I will trust Daniel Farke for the rest of the season. The um, first Legion United manager since Don Reeve to pick up three managers a month awards and the first one uh, in back-to-back. So he knows what he's doing. And so far, so good. Let's keep it Let's keep it going. So, yeah. Um, I want to talk about the two midfielders in the, well, in the midfield as well. I did say during the week that I felt that Glenn Kamara was starting to look a little bit leggy at times in games. I didn't think he had the best of games last night either. In terms of going forward, in terms of recycling the ball and keeping Leeds taking over, he's very, very good at that. In terms of taking the pressure off Leeds in the middle of the park, he had a very, very good game with that as well. Collecting the ball when it needed to be done, turning around, recycling the ball, keeping the pressure off Leeds, um, and getting us to calm down at times when we can be a bit wasteful at times with the younger players with the football. So does a really good job of that. But there were so many moments last night, especially the first half, where Glenn Kamarmic runs into the box, and you know as soon as he gets the ball in the box, he's going to turn around and go backwards with it. That's the problem for me. I wish he'd just keep powering through and go for the goal, have a shot. If he doesn't score, so what? But have a go. You know, if you don't you don't you don't score if you don't shoot. That's a big piece for me again with him. But um I think Archie will get more opportunities in the middle of the park towards the end of the season as well. I think these need to freshen it up points. But the next eight days of a break will do Glenn Kamara a world of good to let him get a rest, let him get the legs back under his belt, and let, let him let him let him move into a better position for the rest of the season. I'm sure he will be 
fine. They, they were very good. Uh, Willie Nyanto and Chris Somerville, quite enough in the first half. Willie comes into it very much in the second half. Chris going through a little bit of a tough spell at the moment. He has been doubled up on. He has been uh, very physically ma uh, man marked as well. We saw that last night when he kind of pushed back a few times last night. Um, needs a bit of confidence, but I'm not going to put any pressure on, on Chris Somerville's head because he has carried this team for the first half of the season in some very, very tough moments. He was the player that stu stood up. It's everybody else's chance now to stand up when he needs that bit of a breather. So um, he is struggling for confidence. You can see it. He's not. He wasn't happy coming off the park last night. And um, I don't know where there's a rest coming up from, but I think the next eight days, the break again will help him. They all need it. They all need it. They looked absolutely knackered. Um, question from Michael Brown. When all fit, would you bring Pascal back into midfield over Groove alongside Kamara or Gray? See, I, I, for me, I think from a defensive perspective, what Ilya Groove has given us in the middle of the park, it's not the sexy stuff and it's not the stuff that everyone notices, but the defensive work that Ilya Groove does in the middle of the park, breaking up attacks and stopping people from coming through the middle, he sends them wide around the outside. That means he's done his job. For me, he does a really good job in there. I don't know if him and Ampadu work well together, but the fact that you've got options there, Michael, I think is, is a huge part of this. You know, if Stroke is available, you saw Joe Rodan go down last night with the head injury, and straight away you're thinking, oh, we need Stroke back because we need that we need that extra cover in there. If nothing else, we need him for cover. Stroke was brilliant for us in the first half of the season. He's a threat from set piece as well, because let's be honest about it, Leeds don't have any threats from set pieces right now. And he's a massive threat from the um, set piece last night. So, yeah, for me, I don't think he comes straight back in, but I think he gives Leeds options. I think you will see Indian Ampadu move back into the centre park before the end of the season, whether it's for Glenn Kamara or whether it's, whether it's for Ilya Groove. Remains to be seen. Ethan Ampadu does like to run forward with the ball as well and can be quite direct. So, yeah, no issues for me there. On the substitutions, Kenneth saying, can you explain my subs are consistently so late? It's an interesting one, Kenneth, because I don't think they've been late in every game. I think we saw against Stokey brought players on with 60 minutes, sorry, against Huddersfield 60 minutes into the game and Stokey brought them on pretty early as well. So it's it's horses for courses, I think. And a lot of managers will be this way. If a game is pretty tight, you're like, I'm not going to change it just yet because it's, it's a bit tight. You can go the opposite way as well. I think he changes it when he feels he needs it. He's also managing people's minutes as well and legs. And I think for me, the changes last night, they could have come a little bit earlier. I mean, you could have brought Dan James on earlier, but the changes last night were very much done to kill the clock. So they were very much done for me to, for game management and to wind the game down and, and take the sting out of Sheffield Wednesday. Because they'd started to come back into the Wednesday's changes seemed to work quite well for them. And um, it just took, take, takes the sting out of the game. So yeah, for me, I thought it was, I thought it was fine. Um, Gail says, Joseph is a good young player, but we need Bamford's experience at the moment. We do at the moment. We do, we do. Paul, every week Somerville gets whacked every bloody week. When we have such a skillful player, he gets whacked. Some tackles are horrendous in Somerville. Yeah, they are. He's not getting any protection. And Farka has spoken about the lack of protection that, the, that he's getting. But he also did say to Bill Cree and Georgina Rudder, they're elite players now. And they've got to expect this. And they've got to deal with it. They've got to be able to handle this and to handle it in the right way. Not be petulant. Not be... Um, not react. We saw Willie Nanto against Huddersfield react and give away a silly free kick that cost Leeds a goal. So that kind of stuff they can't do. They've got to learn to deal with this. They might not get it as much in the Premier League if they get there, but they still need to learn. It's part of the development. They need to learn how to deal with this kind of stuff. So, yeah, he does. But he is taking a huge amount of hits this year, and it has to be taking uh, taking an impact on his body. The other thing to say as well, on the back of what Lockie said on Joe's show yesterday, yesterday, last year, Cree was coming in and out of the team, finding his feet with this team at the level. This year, he's played his first full season with nearly back-to-back -back matches, which, you know, it's a different level from 121. It's different intensity. It's different physicality. So all of that needs to be taken into consideration as well. So it's been a long season for a lot of players already. Like I'm, I'm feeling it. Like, it's it's been a long one. So, yeah. Look, I think he's doing fine. I think he's allowed to have a couple of off days. I think the physical side of it, he needs to deal with. He does need to learn to deal, but he will. This is all experience for these players when they go up to the Premier League next season. Or if they don't go to the Premier League this season, it'll be a big learning curve for them next year as well. But also other teams are figuring out leads as well. And that's why it was great for me last night to see leads going long. The short passing out stuff is fine, but the, we do get a high press put on us at times as well. But being able to mix it up, change the direction of attack and go long and have players play off Paddy or play off Jorginho really works well for me as well. I still think between now and the end of the season, you'll see the likes of Piro, the likes of... Somerville, I'll have their moments. Ice cream band just coming to my house this day. Don't think you can hear that. Anyway, yeah, I think you'll see that. I think they'll all have big moments now in the end of the season, but it's in the moments when they're having their off days that other players need to step up. Last night, Paddy. Last night, Ethan Ampadu, Joe Rodon, and Willie Nyanto stepped up and either made a big mark for Leeds or prevented Sheffield Wednesday from getting into the game. So everyone will have their moments. So... Yeah, it's 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 another good performance. Second half specifically, I felt an awful lot more relaxed in the second half than I did against Stoke. I did against Huddersfield, and that's 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 huge. 
get the break now, move into Millwall. Hopefully, it's nil all a half time between Cardiff and Ipswich. Hopefully, we get a couple of results to go away. But if we keep doing our job between now and the end of the season, I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be fine. Frankly, we'll start looking at the league table with six games to go. So another three matches, three more weeks. Be all over in the eight weeks. All done and dusted in eight weeks. So fingers crossed we can go to the end of the last game of the season against Southampton and not need anything from that game. That would be great um, to be there. But yeah. It's lead, so you never really know. But let's hope, let's hope we get there. Um, and the match for me last night also, Ethan Abdu was brilliant, but Tightly Agreeable was very good from a defensive perspective as well. Like it's, Joe's annoyed that was passing, and fair enough. Passing forward wasn't great. I mean, he goes sideways an awful lot. Recently, more recently, he's been going sideways an awful lot. But I think that's not why he's in the team. He's not in the team for his passing range. He's in the team to stop attacks. He's in the team to break things up. So, yeah. Right, folks, I am going to wrap up now, leave you there. Enjoy the last couple of minutes of the halftime break. If you're 155 watching, you want to stick a like on the video, that'll help the video to grow. Really appreciate that. We passed 26,000 subscribers this morning as well. So a massive thank you, as always, to everyone who supported and likes the channel. I really do appreciate it. It's been great. It's been a mad 18 months, two years. I'm looking forward to getting back to the Premier League and doing this in the Premier League with Leeds because there's less games, which means less videos. I can take a break and do other stuff as well. So anyway, folks, yeah, as um, Pete says, smash the like. Massive thanks as always. Thanks for joining me this morning to uh, watch the review. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I will see you on Monday morning for Legion United News. We have a long week ahead of us with no football. It'll be a weird one. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll be back on Monday. I'll see you then. Thanks for joining.